What's going on YouTube? Vampire Gaming here and today we're going to be doing a tier list for OPO6. OPO6 uh, format begins tomorrow 315. Let me know in the comments below what leader you will be playing. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. We're going to take a look at essentially pretty much any meta relevant leader recently. And then of course the new leaders as well. So we'll go ahead and start off with uh, the newest leaders because we do get a lot of reasonable ones in this set. I think only two are unplayable, that being Uda and Hody. And I know Uda is potentially a fun deck. Um, but she just filmed just didn't get the support it really needed to be something but we're gonna start off gecko moria if you're not familiar with moria he's essentially do flamingo from the graveyard but you do have to discard a card uh but yeah and then he also mills too so he loads up your grave and then you can pitch a card and you can bring back the card you pitched uh so really strong leader you also get the 8-drop Moria, which is a complete game-changer. It defines the meta uh, just because you get to bring back a 4-cost and a 2-cost. Uh, you play it both at 4 uh, in Moria and in Sakazuki and any deck that can use black. But yeah, very strong. Him and Sakazuki, I think, are the going to be the only S-tiers. But then we have Yamato. Now, Yamato is a very strong deck. Has seen success, but it almost feels like Glass cannon -y. You do, of course, have the very aggressive version. Uh, and then you have the Fortress version. So there are two different ways to play Yamato. Uh, because, of course, with four life leaders such as Sakazuki, it can end the game very quickly if they don't have any blockers and they don't have counter. So... I think Yamato is an A-tier leader uh, just because it's not consistent in the same sense that you see leaders such as like Sakazuki and Moria both just in the gameplay and then in just overall like competitive what we've seen from Asia. Now we've got Reiju. Now some people aren't going to agree with me. I know my friend Roberto will not. Raju is very strong, let me preface by saying that, uh, and has huge potential. Because if you play Raju and you drop a Raju, you essentially go plus three. And it's, you know, for the cost of one card and one Dawn, it's Pot of Greed because you're drawing two, but you're also replacing one card. Uh, so it's a genuine plus two, which is absolutely insane. Same thing with Queen. You can go plus two when you play Queen as well. Um, I really, I want to put Reiju in A, but I really feel like she's just the top of B and that's where I'm good. Cause like she's, she's hands down the best. Like she's like a minus, like a minus uh, and has huge potential just because you can play out so many cards for so little Dawn. So you will on the cheap side, but it does have, again, it's downfalls. I'm gonna... I'm going to give her a, I'm going to give her a, just because she has one events in Asia, but I think she's the lowest of a, highest of B. Same thing here with Perona. Perona has two abilities, which are both really strong. I, you know, she won that flagship, which makes it uh, very tempting. Again, I think like a B, I think in terms of what we have. I'm going to put Perona at B just because she can. She has what it takes. Um, but I feel like a part of it is going to be matchup dependent. Uh, and you're going to have to. You're going to want to see favorable matchups to see success. Uh, I still like both of them. It, it's really interesting. And I'm really excited to see what we do here in uh, the English version of the card game. Just because there is so much potential for this. Because, yeah, she uh, she can either rest at four cost or she can give them one cost um, to one of your opponents. So she's like Sakazuki or um, you can just rest a four cost or less. And then you have cards that can like KO four cost and things like that. Uh, then we have Nami. I'm going to put Nami in an A. No, I'm going to put Nami in B just because Nami... Nami thousand percent has what it takes. You get white smoke, which is actually a huge moment for 
uh, Nami, and I think again in like almost like a slowerish meta where we're not having like red rush, Nami really thrives. I think a part of it is of course uh, matchup dependent. Uh, you know, you could very well use to a an aggressive Yamato very early on, especially if you don't hit the triggers. So. Um, I'm gonna put her in B. I think again we could very well see this being there at the top tables. I think she's like high end of B, and I think a lot of it comes down to the scale of the Nami pilot. Zoro, I'm put him in EBO one waiting room. I don't think he really gets anything, but I think just Moria the eight drop really changes the dynamic of both Sakazuki and the Moria leader. To where I just I don't know if he has what it takes and it breaks my heart because red could be so good and I, like you know um, there's of course the ban list coming out and I still don't think he has uh, seen a success because a lot of Asia at this point has just been playing without it I'm gonna put law at C and that of course breaks all of our hearts I'm sure this uh, leader was such a titan for so long he really was just an OPO5 leader but even with the banning of Sakazuki as a deck altogether um, a lot of people have tried out law and still don't believe he has what it takes same thing with Nuge. I think they're both C I don't think either of these decks are going to win I still think there are going to be people who play them uh, but yeah Newgate red just hasn't gotten any good support since OPO3 uh, hasn't gotten any playable cards besides the film blocker that we just got and it's like not playable in every deck it's not very evergreen uh so i'm gonna put him here katakuri i want to put him in a you know yellow gets reject and i think he's slightly better than anel this format so i'm gonna go ahead and put him at a just because like anel does get reject uh which is just busted same with katakuri you can just ko a five you don't have to take the life and you know trigger draw one card but it also allows you to push for game when your opponent gets down to one life so you have to be careful when playing against yellow to not go down to one life if possible especially while they have don or like on their 10 don because then they're going to drop that reject and potentially just go for game so i think yellow just that card and then you get the zero cost uh 3k and okikunojo which is also busted so you get a life trigger that's broken and heals so you essentially can't get rid of it you get a zero cost counter um for the 3000 which is big because katakuri and yellow just overall in this set does not play a lot of counter whereas historically they've played a ton of counter uh they've just slowly but surely filled up with no counter. I like in one of the flagships, the one where Perona won, they swung all in and took out like four life on Katakuri and won because they just they weren't pulling any counter cards or any triggers. Sakazuki, the bane of my existence, my mortal enemy. He is S tier, that is undeniable. Um, when you look back, I believe on One Piece top decks, the overall percentage win that we see on Sakazuki is just slightly above Moria, but he is like the most consistent winning leader uh, in the format as it stands with no bands currently in place. So definitely something to watch out for. He, I think he gets, he's definitely still tough to pilot, but it gets a little bit easier because your lines become Moria lines because you're playing eight drop Moria. You're going to bring back two characters. You also get this and it's like, okay, how am I going to remove stuff? Um, so you get some strong removal in tangent with Moria, but you also get more linear combos almost. Uh, and then of course there are, there are more and a bunch of micro decisions, but uh, just being able to, like, back-to-back uh, -back A drop is going to be a big thing. Luffy, I'm going to put this purple Luffy in F. Unfortunately, he does just completely phase out of this format. So, not much we can do with him. Uh, definitely keep your keep your queens, because queens are good in Reiju. Keep your queens, and I believe Reiju becomes even better if we see the same bands. So, don't get rid of your queens just yet. But yeah, I think Luffy doesn't even make the ranks. Uh, Enel, I'm going to put Enel, I'm going to put him in B. Because Enel is still a very strong leader. Yellow still has very strong cards. 
But with like Big Drop Mori, I think it adds just a little bit more pressure being able to bring out three bodies in total to put pressure on the leader when they just can't keep the board clean. Uh, so yeah, I think I think he's B tier. Let me know in the comments below. I know some people might disagree. But yeah, I think I think it's very fair. Um because he does again, he gets the same support that uh Katakuri does. But of course, he has the bonus of being like a seven life leader. And then we've got red, purple, law. Now I'm a I'm a, I'm I'm a switch it up for you guys, because honestly, I think he's B. I think he's extra booster O one waiting room, but I think he's B. I think he still has legs because you get um, Shariah, I think is his name. It's the OPO six film blocker. When you block, it becomes your leader's power or your opponent's le leader's power until the start of your turn. So he blocks for potentially large and then he stays there so they can't just easily swing over him for a three cost. And then you also get raise max, which allows you to play Gordon and raise max, which gives you eight one drops that minus characters by three. And he continues to get even better with extra booster 01 and is arguably the best deck in the format going into the ban list. We'll have to truly wait to see once Asia fully adopts that and we have ban list events over there. But so far, a lot of people, I believe, are on this same train here. Then we have Red Purple Luffy. This card, I believe, is just F tier. Ah. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. I'll put him in C. I'm going to give him C tier. Just because, like, whenever I've played against this leader, I'm like, it's like, how do you beat this? But most of the time you beat it because they don't see top end. Like, they're their own demise. But a 6K leader that doesn't lose their life and doesn't have to go down to zero, somehow they always have, like, a ton of cards in hand. They're going to play out queen, cycle, and then, you know, they hit uh, New Gates or, you know, if they play the Seven Eustace. There's potential there. Uda, I'm going to put an EBO one waiting room. The biggest thing that changes for Uda and the biggest challenge, of course, that I have when playing Uda and while I was piloting Uda is you just don't have 2Ks. You don't have 2Ks and you're probably playing 8. I bumped it up to 10. And that was working fine, but only one of them searchable. So, like, whenever I would, if I whiff, it's going to be a 2K or pretty much, or, or Eustace. It's going to be a 2K or Eustace. But with extra booster 01, you do get that extra. Dang. <laughs> you do get that extra 2K with the Sanji, the 4 or 5. And that's really just solid overall. And then finally, I guess because everybody knows me um, for Ace, I'm going to go ahead and put Ace in here. I think Ace, I'm going to just give Ace D, uh, which breaks breaks my heart. But I know a lot of people ask me, hey, am I playing Ace in OPS 6? Uh, the answer is yes, but actually no. Um, because it's not going to be this Ace. The blue-yellow Ace that is coming out, I think, has way more legs to stand on. Uh, and it comes out next month. Uh, it's pretty much just a month away in the Three Brothers Structure Decks ST12, I believe. Might be ST13, ST12 might be Zoro Sanji, um, which also boosts Uda. But there is going to be a new Ace Leader. Check him out. He's got a decent ability. I think he should have been yellow red and he would have been a lot stronger, especially if he had the same ability as Sabo. But. That's neither here nor there. Uh, he does have a good ability. He did uh, show up at a couple flagships. I do think he has that potential. Um, top 32 leader uh, for sure. Maybe top 16 if you have like favorable matchups. But black and yellow Luffy is definitely the strongest leader out of this set. But yeah, um, I will not be playing Ace, the red Ace. There is allegedly support coming for him in OPO8, which is about six months away. But me personally, I will be playing Moria. But this is essentially a tier list of all of the meta leaders. If you find this content of value, if you could just do me a favor 
hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a ton to work with other creators and just to bring you the best content I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.